Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Welcome back to another special early edition of the Hockey Nation Live Show. This is your co-host, uh, co-friendship directly for the Sunshine State Raining Day. And we have to find a co-host uh, from the West Coast, California State, uh, Mr. Michael DeVillano. It's a big week, Pierre. We have a great, camp. great Monday, first of all. The last Monday of August, we have a, still have two more days to go before we hit September. Yeah, we'll and, never get this August back. And then we have to move on. To, we are getting closer from the NHL. We have 43 days before the puck drop. And uh, when we for me, it's like September, Michael, is like really where everything starts, right? The, the kids go back to school, the yep. sport, whatever is the sport, like, uh, you know, the, the football, college, football, NH, NFL, they have hockey coming soon. And then after that, the NBA will follow up. They're going to get the World Series, uh, baseball. So it's really it's getting busier and busier. In September, and that's what the transformation for me to finish strong the year, first of all, but also that's what really we back normal what we we do usually, right? And uh, that's what happening. So um, look, we'll be it's going to be very interesting the next couple of weeks around the NHL. That's what we will cover. To be honest with you, and uh, we'll be uh, seeing. Look, for the last week it was really quiet around. I think you have che Chevnikov signed a big contract. They have she uh, Sean. Couturier, and they have a couple of contracts like Dylan Dubé and other one like him uh, during the week, but nothing big. And then Saturday, nothing happened in NHL until uh, 6 p.m. when the Carolina Hurricanes um, start to create something like different, everything like that. And then the, the social media sent that night is blowing up and yeah. with crazy stuff on every direction and we turned out we passed hours on the hockey national show saturday night sunday night talking about this but i'm not going to talk more about what i said the people know already already what i said about this but first of all we are welcome the number one fans of the hockey national Live show michael and finland and talking about finland talking about Cooking me because he's from Finland. I'm sure going to hear more about Yamo, what he's going to say about the case of a Chesperi Cooking me. But at the end of the day, we all want to know more, Michael. What do you think about the case? Because honestly, we did not hear from you yeah. about this. And uh, welcome, Mr. Yamo Vertanen. <laughs> no, Michael, you don't need to be 10, you just need the quality. We have the one, we have the quality. Yamo is with us. Well, Jarmo's here. Um, you know, the one thing we said about this player is he needs patience and this throws all that out the window. So it's like, he's forever and ever going to be overvalued unless he magically comes through and becomes some sort of a player that I don't see him becoming. Um, you know, he struggled at times to stay in the NHL. He was introduced early so he could be you know, a 30, 35 point guy, maybe he ends up being a 50 or 60 point guy. I, I just don't, I think he's got some flaws in his game that need to be addressed and giving the guy $6 million really puts pressure on him, no matter what way you look at it. So that, that's the first part that kind of concerns me. And we've seen this happen to other players and it, it can ruin their career. Now, I, I, I don't know. It's only one year deal at 6 million. It's clearly a revenge move by Carolina for the Ajo contract. Aho is so light years ahead of this player. So to match the Aho deal was like a no brainer for Carolina. I don't know if this is a no brainer for Montreal. You know, I think they seriously are thinking, Hey, let's take the first and the, and the third let's regroup. Losing him's not going to wreck our lineup. He was in and out of our lineup already. Maybe he goes to Carolina and becomes a top notch player. Like, you know, maybe that happens, but I'm not sure if, you know that that's clear so there's risk all the way around for this and carolina obviously doesn't care it's one year they'll blow the money and it was it was like a f you by the owner to the other to gm <laughs> it's it's weird kk did nothing wrong nobody's done anything wrong this is within the rules I say so, man. Uh, he, he's stating what i'm thinking too right like the guy that, yes, he'll get money short term, 
but the qualifying offer on this will be almost seven million. So now it makes it worse in the second year, no matter what, unless he agrees to a much lower. There's no signing bonuses. This is straight up money, Pierre. They gave him a twenty dollar signing bonus and fifteen. <laughs> So now what, here what I'm going to tell everything about what I said Saturday night and what I said yesterday. So Saturday night, I was the one who said, okay, you know, they let him go, everything like that, right? Yeah. Then yesterday, I gave another perspective of the chat where I was trying to defend the other side where you should keep him over there. Because if you go around social media, everybody, 75% of people want to let him go. And 25% let him keep him, right? Yeah. And I will give you an example. The 75% the fans want, want him to go. They are the same fans going to, he said all the time, we don't have a second center. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Sure. That's what the reality we have one right now. It's called just very cooking in me. We want to give up him about that one over there. So for me, wait, we have it. He is right here. So why it's do you want him to right? go? Well, I, I think because he's it's clear that he's not necessarily even a centerman in the NHL. I'm kind of worried about him. Like if you if you watch him as as a scout, you go, you know, he's got some serious problems in his game. And the biggest thing he needs is time. And he's 21, he's already got experience, which is really good. And there's no pressure on him. And suddenly if this guy's a six or a seven million dollar player, like He's not Ryan O'Reilly. Like Ryan O'Reilly, Pierre got this contract in arbitration. And they traded O'Reilly from Colorado because it's like, oh, he's overpaid. And O'Reilly was a 60 point player. O'Reilly had 28 goals, right? And they were like, oh, he's overpaid. Uh, so you're like, wait, you know, there's a big gap between these players. So I, I don't know. It, it really, I get why you'd let him go and you take the picks. And, and you just focus on what you got. So that, that's definitely a, a real possibility. If you keep him, um, what's the upside? What if he has a 30-point season? But that's already better what we don't have. We don't have nobody. What's the difference between him and Ryan Paling at this point? Um, a lot. Not much. I don't a think lot. there's very much experience. I can guarantee you thing. I will guarantee you one thing. All right. Last next season, Kokonemi playing Carolina on Montreal, he have a minimum of 40 points. Right? He has 20 points, 56 games. So he has still have 26 more games to play and give him about eight points. That gave him about 30 points, Marco. Now, and I'm going to defend him right now because that's what it is yesterday. How many minutes do you play per game right now? 13 minutes per game. How many times he played with solid player beside him? Yeah. So my point as a second center, Michael, if he play 16 minutes per game and he played with regular, regular player, Anderson, Toffoli, Drouin, Hoffman, Gallagher, regular them, and not give me Lekanen, Jake Evans, Corey Perry, Eric Stahl, and, you know, the bottom. Give him a solid second center winger with him and try it for 25 game. All right. So yeah. it's going to be his first time in NHL and three years going to have that kind of opportunity. I promise you one thing. He's going to get at least 35 point to 45 point in NHL as a second center at 21 years old. He's getting the same kind, a lot of point like anybody else does as a second center and in initial overall. Don't don't focus on the yeah. money. He didn't ask six point one million dollars. He asked three point and three and three point five million dollars. That's what he asked to Montreal. And what, and they didn't want to give that to him because he wasn't <clears throat> like I'm not sure he's even worth that. He's Michael is a sec if he become your second oh, center. If that's the problem, I think no, no, it's not, not if that. he become <laughs> your second center. But Pierre, there, all right, think about like I think he's a good person, so I think that's the first part that's good, right? Oh, let's see, 
So I, I don't think that there's a laziness thing. I don't think that there's a bad character thing. So that's the good start. I think he has significant skating issues. And I think that his puck distribution, it's like getting it, a random hand grenade. And I no, think Michael, that's, that's what he does the most. He's, a, he's the best player from Kenneth after Suzuki had the most distribution puck. The problem is not this. The problem is not about distribution, the QA, the vision, Michael. Him, it's about scoring. I think it's more than that. I, th I think the truth is that if you watch him and you're playing on his line, it's frustrating because you don't know when you're getting the puck. And a lot of the decisions he makes are based upon him losing a groove in the skate or going into bad area. And he's effective when he four checks, but that's not a, to me. I, I just don't know. I think he's a little bit frustrating to play with for guys. That's, but that's again, I will tell you that Montreal Canadian said he become our second center of the team. I mean, I, if you pay him six million, that's what you have to do, and you are biting on that. But he don't pay, pay him. It's not like Benjamin he said this, right? So when yeah. he requests three million dollars, Michael, for a three years contract for a second center, because you consider him now a second center, is cheap. Well, he's still. And Benjamin tried to put him at two million dollars. Benjamin struggled with all the RFA. Sen is a GM. He did the same thing with Pacioretty. He did the same thing with other rookies sure, over there year after year. There, there's a big difference between where Pacioretty was versus this guy. Like, he, he's not shown that he can be an everyday NHL player. And I, I get what you're saying. If you pay him $6 million, you make him second. I think everything with this guy has been projection based upon him being a high draft pick and them having a gap. Nick Suzuki is legit, and I'm not sure if he's a first-line center, but he's definitely a top two. But, Michael, he did not ask 6.1. But he's, he signed it now, so now you've got to make that decision. I, no, no, but my point, he didn't ask. For him, it was $3 million. Why you fight for $500,000 million? You, you lose Danu for the same stupid money because you don't want to give $500,000 because you want to be a bad head. And Bergeron loves him because if – Stop uh, uh, bad to wait, to wait, to wait, to wait. He is not Ask worth $3 him million to trade dollars, him this Pierre. week. He is not worth $3 million, Pierre. Of course, he, Michael, which He's player at the close. second center and initial you're not going to get a $3 He's million? Not a second line center. That's the problem. If you look at Toffoli's second contract, Pierre, it I'm going to promise you guys here today, I'm going to give you a season of 40 point, 40 point. At least for the next 10 years of Cook Enemy and NHL. And I'm telling you that he will do this easily. <laughs> He's going to reach 60 points in NHL when you have a chance to give him 16 minutes per game. There's a reason they don't play him that. So maybe it's a big maybe, Pierre, for for me. Like when you when you project a player like this. If I was confident in that, I'd be like, yeah, pay him. Because you can't – I think the problem is if Montreal doesn't pay him, you know, they lose the tit for tat. And if they say, you know what, Carolina, you take him. Because now Carolina is 8.3. And what do you do with this guy? Do you put him in the AHL? What do you They're 83 million is their cap with him. Oh, they will do the same thing with Montreal. Montreal is over cap. They will they will send someone in the American Hockey League. Yeah, but they might have to be him. Because if you look at who else, like they would have to drop two or they three. They don't have players, players, Michael. Their their lineup is you have a lot of old in Carolina. The forward, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's but not they, great. They have a lot of players that are kind of seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand. And you can't put one of them in the minors and solve the problem. That's kind of why I'm like, you might have to put him to solve the problem. <laughs> Unless you're going to get rid of a Niedermeyer or something like Nieder Rider or something like that. Right. So, and it, and for sure, 40 points is not good enough. It would be still overpaid. I mean, again, I, I'll go back to the Ryan O'Reilly scenario, right? Like when Ryan had this issue, because he had the same issue, Pierre, and that's why he ended up in Buffalo. So he ends up in Buffalo because Ryan, let's just look. I don't know if you can see this. Um, 
because I think this is a good comparison, right? Ryan said, listen, I am a second line center on your team. I, I do everything. And they were like, we'll put you on the wing on the second line. Otherwise, you're a third line center. We're going to play Matt Duchesne and Paul Stastny ahead of you. And then he went to arbitration. He got a, he got big money, right? Like he got like 7 million bucks or something. And they were pissed. And so they traded him. Now, in retrospect, it was the wrong decision. But if you look at Ryan at that point in his career, he had a 28-goal season. <laughs> so you're like, well, okay. Let's see if we can find him. Where's St. Louis? So I think that's a fair comparison because at the time that was probably him, right? And he didn't, I don't know if he even had a bridge. So he had like, it was 6 million bucks. So he went from 880, he got five and then six, right? And they were pissed and they traded him. And he ends up with seven, five and wins the Stanley Cup. But if you look at Ryan's stats at that point, you know, he had, okay, one year he showed progress. 13 goals, and then 55 points. He was almost, you know, he was just about 60 point pays, 60 points. So he had shown at that point that he was some, he was that player. And I think that's the difference. And this is really risky. I mean, there's no way it's not risky, right? Oh, why can I show you? Jesus, why does it open up in new windows? It's so annoying. But if you look at, you know, Here's Brian's entry level contract, right? So he had the first three years, 26, 26, 55 points. And then he had a shortened season because of the contract. And he has 20 points in 29 games. And he was two years at five mil. Then he had 64 points. He had a 28 goal season. And then he gets the six million or the seven million dollar contract. And they they wanted to trade him, so they moved him, right? So they move him to Buffalo, but he's always been this same player. And I think the problem is we have not seen in his third year a 50, 60 point season from this guy. And I don't see the same things I saw with Ryan. Ryan was a victim of Paul Stasny and Matt Duchesne being ahead of him in their depth chart. And they had Nathan McKinnon coming. So I just don't see that with this guy. Like they've given him the chance to try to be that guy. They need him to be that guy. So I'm not saying you don't do it. If you do it, you got to play him second line, right? To your point. And then you hope he gets 40, 50 points. Yeah. If not, you have Peru second line. It's over. For the next three years, Montreal Canadian cannot do anything. Yeah. And what are you going to do? They will have to send Anderson to Foley, maybe Suzuki out of the, the, the team because they don't have nobody anymore. And the team does not want to come here. Any player will want to play with Montreal after that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, losing Dano is going to hurt them. I don't think, and for sure, this guy really should be a, a two and a half million dollar contract. So him asking for three, it was reasonable for them to negotiate with them, but they didn't count on <laughs> their bad behavior in the past coming back to fight them. <laughs> But that's my point, because <laughs> what is the situation? They have no choice. They have that's no my choice. point. They have no choice. <laughs> well, again, I, so I will go back to Ryan Paling because for sure, Chain, it's a revenge move, and I think that's the answer, and everybody knows that. When the Carolina Hurricanes troll, <laughs> this, this is my concern, what Joseph is saying, right? His performance from now because of the pressure of a $6 million contract. I just don't see him being that player. Ryan Paling is not far off from what he is right now. The difference is they've they took the chance and put Kakanyemi in because he was a higher draft pick. And I don't think he's I don't think unlike Paling, they're like, go earn your stripes. I don't think they really did that with I mean they still put him in the AHL, so I shouldn't say that, right? But he again, Michael, though. if he get it, but he cannot put on the AHL anyway, he's going to be on the waiver list, so he's going yeah. to be but who's gonna pick that contract up? Nobody. <laughs> But you'd be surprised because after one year, Michael, you can sign him an extension for three years, a bridge contract at $3 million. That's what he should have. He should have been the 2.5. He already million. have that kind of contract with Carolina, Michael. He, they already offer him an extension after the year this year. 
Oh, Carolina saying yeah. three million after this. It would drop its contract at three or four million dollars after that. Yeah, that, that's what you would have to have in your back pocket, Pierre. You would have to know that you're going to sign him to a reasonable contract after this. That'd be mutually agreeable. And uh, you can also, Michael, you have a close and an RFA. Now we learned this weekend. You can drop a contract from six point, like for fifteen percent. Like you can, you can eighty-five percent. You can get a contract, so you can get back a contract at five point one. It's a, cl a special close called Elite something. I see this this weekend. Uh, worst case again. My problem, they, they they can do what they want. At the end of the day, I don't care. I care. This is not my team, right? No, But no. I'm, I'm, it, it's, they, they don't have anybody to play center. Well, again, if you look at player for player, the difference between him and Ryan Paling is very small. It might not be anything. It's Ren, you, you're telling me right now this morning, Rand Paling is going to have more point at Cook Enemy? He might have the same Pierre. He might by have the mile, same. By mile, by mile. We don't I, talk I, about... A guys, and you, you don't talk about two different players where Poland at 12 minutes per game is not going to do anything. If you Maybe. are going next season with Rand Poland as a, your second best center, better to give up and not, don't show up this year. Well, they might be in that scenario anyway. I mean, if when you to your point, they've already lost Dan No, and I think they really undervalued like what he brought to the table. You know, and then there's a big drop off to Kakinyemi right now. He would have to do something significant to a couple areas of his of his game, and I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it. Listen, Pierre, this is a bomb dropped into Mark Bergevin's backyard by Carolina. <laughs> this is more damaging than what they did with Aho because Aho has absolutely justified his money. <laughs> so this this takes like serious risk, right? <laughs> to say. Yeah, I'll match it. I think you hit on the head, like, and I don't know the answer to this. Could you say, look, we'll give you six million this year. Let's sign a five-year deal at three. That it's almost like you have to go all in on this guy. And even that I think is really risky. And I agree, they don't have anyone great coming up behind them. I don't, don't have I don't think Ryan Paling is great. But I don't think this guy is either. Like he's shown nothing to me that says he's going to be. I, I, he's only 20 years old. He never check Jeff F. Nevnikov this year. He check. got a seven points to five. Michael, have only 17 goal. He regressed. Wow, 25 goal pace. No, he regressed. From two years ago, he regressed. Again, I'm going to use the Ryan O'Reilly example. This is an 18-year-old, 19-year-old, 20-year-old guy. And he's a, he got the same contract. He got a two-year, six million. Actually, he got a two-year, five million dollar contract. And they thought it was too much. And then he, you know, he signs here. So he gets his money. It was prorated. You know, it's tough coming in the middle of the year. He gets 28. But Michael, points. his third year, he got he got 55 points. Yeah. That's my point. And now so, you're giving him why, more. Why he cannot contract. get 25 points. He, he got this almost the same kind of point cooking me the first two years. Yeah, I, I think his first year he looked promising, right? Oh, where'd it go? That's not what I wanted. Cocking. God, why do you open up in a new friggin' window? Such an amateurish site. So you're right. Like if he had continued on this trend then you're not so worried, right? Because then he, by now, he would be a 55-point player. But if you talk regression, this player has regressed. So it's it's risky. I mean, I, I, you know, you think about what Ryan did. Right now, Michael is a 30-point minimum per year. That's what he is right now. Five goals in 56 games, six goals in 36 games. That's what he is. Man, I don't know. So, <laughs> so here's, a, here's an alternative. Pierre, think about this. Let him go. Let him go, right? Yep. Take your first and your third and make an offer sheet to Elias Peterson. But you know, yeah, but now you lose a first round pick, a second round pick, a two round pick. Wait, you no. don't deal. No, 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 no. 
you're Montreal. You let him go. You get a first and a third, and then you go make an offer sheet for Elias Peterson. Yeah, but you go to lose four four round pick. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, maybe. But it's not help next year. The the you pick, Michael. <laughs> And NHL, the, the NHL, Michael, Montreal, and then make the playoffs. Go have a, maybe one of the great pick next season. The, the next two oh. years, the NHL have an amazing, great draft pick. If they finish in the bottom. Yeah. I don't know. I think you just. And again, I, me, I do the same thing. You, you let him go, but who's placed second, second center? So do, you've got a number one who's Elias Peterson, and you got a number two that's Suzuki. You are not missing the playoffs, Pierre. You get you, you see, cannot have Peterson, day. Michael. Now you completely destroy your prospect area. Who cares? Three, three first round pick, Michael. Who cares? He is worth that. You would trade for Elias Peterson. You would trade four or five first round picks. So you have a chance to maybe get Shane Wright, Connor McDonald, better. And But to get like men's cup, to get money in cove, whatever they are. And okay. for Elias Peterson? You're saying tank. What? You're saying tank and hope you get win the draft lottery. No, no, but the first, the, the next three years, Michael, the NHL have a first round pick. Amazing that the draft is there. So you gave right now about you, four or five players in return for Peterson. Look, look at their picks, right? They got Caulfield. Great. Gooley is a ways away. Mayu's like a nightmare. I mean, where in this are you going? Yeah, you guys are going to pick a superstar. I mean, I just don't see it. I think their draft pick is amazing. Mm, what? <laughs> the draft pick for what they pick, Romanov 38, is great. Yeah. That's a good point. All right. Caulfield is great. Nolander is, is great. great. That's my point. You already got him. But no, but my point, I don't know what you want to bring there. The, Kakanyemi is not great. Yolonen's not on the roster. Gooley is not great. But you, you don't know, like, build your team with offer sheet, Michael. You beat your team with your prospect. If let's let's say you offer sheet Peterson. You don't need a prospect. This guy's 21. He's the same age as, as Kakinyemi, like a year difference. And he's already like a point of game player. He's an elite superstar player. This is what you want. And then you get him and Suzuki, one and two. You're so far ahead of it. So you get a first round pick. Yes, you're going to give up your four. Who cares? You still got a first round pick in this deal. <laughs> and then you still got Caulfield. I mean, you're, it's money in the bank with this guy. Like, Peterson is money in the bank. And now I think Vancouver would probably figure out a way to match it. But, I mean, and I, I know Pete, people are saying flipping KK to Arizona for Dvorak. I don't think Arizona likes KK. At you cannot trade him. Mind. What's that? You cannot trade him. Kakinyemi? Yeah. So then that's, you know, I, and I don't, I don't think that, You could flip the first and the third, I bet, and get Dvorak. Right? You might be able to say, just let him go. Take the first and the third. I think maybe that's what people are saying. And then trade the first and the third and get After Dvorak. After I know, Arizona will ask him more. For Dvorak, probably. Well, it's because we, they know Montreal have nobody anymore. Yeah. Gooley's a little bit. He's a, he's a year or two away. And, I, and what I, I like him. Pierre knows I really like Caden. Like I've spoke about Caden before you guys. He's going to be him. a great hockey He's player. He's going to be a very good top four D, I believe. The picks, Kakinami is not worth six. So First time he's in the, in the house, by the way. Yeah, Rain, thanks for joining us. What a crazy discussion, though, isn't it? <laughs> It's like such an interesting puzzle. Montreal's enough youngsters knocking at the door. They can afford to exchange those draft picks. This is kind of what I think. Because I, I think that guys are just going to keep leapfrogging him. And it's risky. And Okay, if he goes to Carolina, gets 55 points, then you go, oh, sh shame on us. Right? But you don't know. I mean, he's never shown that he can be that player. I think that's the problem. That's on him, right? 
So what, you're going to give him $6 million, suddenly going to be a 55-point player? I, I don't know about that. Late picks for Montreal, great, but not so much for their first. Ilona is not really... No, you know, because we let him go. <laughs> because we trade them. That's why we don't, they don't produce on Montreal. We have one. It's called Cook and Me. We don't want to give him go. We he's just not, said go. We we have Sokachev. We trade him for the well, one. that was a mistake, right? No, we have Cal Chenard. We did not surround himself. Well, he let him play. He, we let him on the, on the bar all night long at the Grissom. We let him leave in with his with his sister. They have all the crack and everything, drug inside this upper apartment. So sometimes you have to look at yourself as an organization. What we do right or wrong? Go to this, this check my goal, Detroit Red it. Wings. Go over there. I, I take the last 20 years of over there. Of and course. go year after year. Everybody go one direction. They go to the Grand Rapids. They go there all the time. They develop them. They teaching them. And yeah. they make them better who they are when they show up in the NHL. That's I, I what agree. Detroit did. And Montreal cannot do that. I agree with you. So why do we care about four first round draft picks when you get a star like Peterson who's a finished product? He's a finished product. You know what you're getting with that guy. And again, cooking in me is not like oh, cooking in me is not like anybody. He does not deserve the 6.1. But yeah, he got he good. got a prison for the owners of the <laughs> Carolina, give him 6.1. Cook enemy have nothing to do. Cook enemy have nothing to do. He no, got it. You're just, so he, I, I don't think he like, Weber Michael, he got $12 million dollars by the flowers. What he said, he said yes. Of course. I, I, I owe got 8.25 on Montreal. What he said, yes. Cook enemy, he just said yes because the money is there. Right. But I don't think everybody's saying Everybody, everybody you in the in the chat, me, Michael, everybody in hockey knows he does not He's deserve right. that money. We right. know that. Yep. My problem is if you let him go, you don't have any other center at that moment to fix your problem. But again, I don't I just don't think that you're going to ever have that center with him. It's such a risk and so much money and such a bad spot. Unless you, to your point, you know you have a deal for him for year two that is $3 million. And even that might be too much for him. Michael, well, it, you know, costs you, sure. it costs you only $3 million more right now at what he's supposed to get. He's not supposed to get $3 million. Pierre, look, Tyler Toffoli's bridge contract was $2.8 million. dollars. He was a 24 goal scorer. <laughs> he was so like that's a bridge contract for a player that's produced. This guy has not done that. Guys like him are getting 1.2 mil. Man, no, come on, Michael. He's a third overall pick. So? Go check all the contract at the th first three overall you pick. Go. You're going to see that's about what he gets. Shanika, we just get 7.75. Uh, Barrett Hayden. Spetchikov is a second overall pick that can score 60 points. And he's already shown that. Nico Ashire, Michael, got seven million dollars. He's overpaid, and he got fifty-five points. But that's the point. He's overpaid. You don't he's, ask he's him five million dollars. You ask him three million dollars. He will become your second center. That's not how that works. He's got to show it. This guy had fifty-two, forty-seven. So he's he's regressing, regressing, and they gave him a lot of money. But his points per game are there. He's a very good two-way player. I don't think he's a first-line center, and we're seven million. But again, Michael is a first overall pick. At that point, it doesn't matter. Like this was just a bad contract. Like they they made the kid captain. He's not, you know, this is another guy that might. He had a career year with Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall was mad for one year, and he gets a career year. So you tell him, hey, buddy, you become our still... second center, but we cannot give you $3 million. You have to go $2 million. Okay, look, think about this. <laughs> 18, right? Okay, he's hurt. So he misses 13 games. He probably would have been about the same production. Here, he actually probably has gone up in production, right? Because this would be, you know, it's around the same. It's probably the same. So I think he's shown what he is. He is a 55-point player. Plays a 200-foot game. How many minutes he play per game? 
is not, he's he's earned his minutes though. That's the difference. This guy was given the opportunity. There's nobody in front of him. So, oh, he got he gave him an opportunity. Again, we did this to Kokanemi. What? Kokanemi is not deserving of more time. He did I, not I see, we did not give him to him. Nobody gave this guy time. So what he takes for him to get time? He's he's played himself into the AHL. That's not what happened with Hishar. This is a very different gap between these two players. I know. I'm talking about his time. Why we did not okay. give him 16 Nolan, minutes per game? Here's here's a question, Nolan Patrick. Right? You want to talk about a second overall draft pick? Right? Same year. Why is Nolan Patrick knocked six million bucks? His numbers are better than Kakinyemi's. This guy's numbers are better than Kokinemi's. He is legitimately shown he is a better player. I don't see his better number. Yeah, absolutely. Nine point, Michael, and 52 game. Kokinemi have 20 point. So then you're saying the same for a player that's based on injury. Well, if you look at his first two years, he had the same points. number of same number with Cook and Emi. Can he let me have 26 points? Okay. So why is Nolan Patrick not getting three million dollars? <laughs> he's a million. What do you mean? Because he's still on, he's just got his uh, new contract also his concussion. Because the team does not want to give him a, a long contract, whatever, because his problem he got with concussion, Michael. He's not, he would not get a $3 million contract for this. But if you are a GM, you don't give $3 million to Kenemi, you, you have the guy to become your second center because you tell everybody in the world he's become your second center for the upcoming season. You build your team to be a second center, but we don't pay you. <laughs> we just give you only $2 million, buddy, and we're going to put you on the four line. He is a fourth That's why he player. does not want to play in Montreal. That's why he does not want to come back in Montreal because Good. you don't get an opportunity. I'm going to play somewhere where they're going to give me an opportunity. Is he going to play ahead of Aho, Trocek, or Stahl? No, Absolutely because he got $6.1 million. He's never going to play against ahead of any of those guys. I'm telling you right now, you're going to surprise. They're going to put him on the left side, on the That's left wing. That's what they're going to do, Pierre. They're going to put him on the wing. Yes, and because he's, he's going to have a chance to play 14-15. He's going to play with great hockey player beside him and not Lekonen, not Paul Biron, and not Corey Perry. <laughs> yeah. He, he's, he's like... He produced 30 points per season with nobody beside him. Yeah. Put him with Gallagher, put him with Tufoli, put him with Josh Anderson, and let him play 60 minutes. That's my point behind that. There, there's no way this guy makes their top six. There's no way this – he might not make their top nine, Pierre. Like Martin Nikash, this is what's crazy. Martin Nikash might be their best player, and he can play center. He's playing the wing because Trocek and Ajo are playing ahead of him. He's actually a centerman. <laughs> like, that's an elite player. <laughs> like, this would be... He he might be fourth-line right winger. <laughs> Or third-line. Like, third-line right winger, right? Like, you could see Suzuki, Stahl, and Kokinemi. So let him go. <laughs> and all the Montreal fans do not... For Don't the complain. next five years, do not for the next five years to come as this chat to tell me we don't have no center. <laughs> do not tell me that for the next five years. Hey, we don't have no center in Montreal. Thank you. Can, can you imagine? Oh, I agree. But I think, you know, they didn't have a center before. So I, don't think, I, I honestly think I would really lean towards letting him just go. And at the end of the day, Michael, it's not because they have the second center. He is not better than Tyra Vine and Yarmo. Michael, is an elite Michael could, do, do you have the second center? His name is Nick Suzuki. Yeah, exactly. They, they don't have the first center. I, I totally agree with you, Pierre. And that's kind of my point, right? That's where I'm like, all right, if you're going to be in a bad situation, go all in. 
take a risk and try to go bigger and get Peterson. You're never going to draft a guy like this and you're never going to develop him. You've shown that you have Caulfield. So if you have Peterson and Caulfield on a line, holy crud, like Caulfield's your star. He's not going to play center though. I mean, the reality is he is an elite talent and he might take a little dip, but I bet you he gets 25 to 30 goals this year. But overall, Michael, honestly, the point is this part. And I, I you know, I bring this to, to shake the chat a little bit. Yeah. People are upset, but the key behind this is this, right? You have two options. You sign him and then re you negotiate ne next year. We're going to see what's happening. The second option, Michael, is to, to let him go. But before they let him go, he needs to negotiate to get another center in NHL. Yeah, they got to make him move. It be Devo Rack or Jake, Jack Akel or whatever right. he is, whatever the name. We don't mean uh, you know, Monaghan or Chili Miller, whatever they are, right? And that's the only way he have to let him go. I if not, it. Michael, he cannot let him go. The, that, you, you know, know what, I mean? like, what I'm thinking, right? Which is, I, I don't know. I think Vancouver would figure out a way to match. However, let's say it happens. You give up all those picks. You don't care. I don't Peterson think so they will go with offer shit with anybody, I but I think they will try to get Diva Rack or another yeah. center around yeah. the league. Those are logical that, moves. You know what I mean? Because he cannot start the season, Michael, without cooking him and Dano and everything like that with a big old second. We don't have anybody cover him, the second center. And all we do we do right now with cooking him is if, right? Because he's showing if. That's the problem. But again, I, for me, is a kid can can have easily easy for me 40 point per year he could also easily be in the ahl um i don't see that michael um the way he play the way he, he create point every year is a guy can easily to get 30 to 40 point per year and he did this with 30 minute penal 30 toi per game he's done that um, no, so he's not Dermo, a superstar, I, I Michael. Sure is like way better playmaker than Kokinemi ever will be, and I think he's not strong. But Kokinemi is like he's got problems in his game, you know. Nikash is legit. <laughs> he's so good. All right, Nikash, you guys, he's going to be an amazing, great hockey player. <laughs> yeah, KK Aho and TT, right? Nah. I think T I think KK would have a very hard time playing with an Aho and a Teravinen. I think he would be the Zach Hyman of that line. Maybe. And he might not be able to score as much as Zach Hyman. Because when he's Michael, a he does not score. The Cook enemy need to be with a sniper. He have to be that's why Cook enemy with Offman, Cook enemy with Tofoli, he's going yeah. to be great. But I'm telling you, like I'm telling you right now, Pierre. They have a hard time playing with him. And ever, whatever, uh, not whatever, but what he said reigns in the beginning, right? We all agree, and everybody is not worth yeah. it at six point one million dollars. Yeah, it's it's such a it's a crazy puzzle if you're Mark Bergevin, but I think it's relatively easy. Like when I talk to people in Montreal about it, they're like, "Yeah, it's total revenge move." They they very well could walk away from this. I I think that there's a very high possibility. He's working the phones harder to get another centerman than he is to keep Cook and Yemi. I don't think there's any question between the Montreal guys. This guy's not worth three million. That's what the discussion is. And I don't, I don't think they're too worried about it. And they, I don't know if they're taking this personally or not. I don't think so. But I think they're just like guys. Like we've we've tried to develop this guy. That's their. I think that's the way Montreal's thinking right now. The best thing, I know, Michael, honestly, right is to get Devo Rack and let go Kokenemi and so. let Karina have that, that problem of $6.1.1 million. Yep. Right? And yep. then trade the first round pick, third round pick, and add something Whatever. else. High low learn with that, everything like that, or yeah. all, whatever yep. it is, right? Yeah. I think so. Now you have Devo Rack at $4.5 million for four more years, Michael. Right. So that would be the best scenario for the Montreal Canadian. You know this guy can get you 40, 50 points that you want. Yeah, and he's a big guy, and he's he's a good skater. He's got a good shot. Zuzki is worth it at six million. Zuzki right now, next year after his contract, he's going to be around seven million dollars. I bet he's six seven because he, he's right now is looking like a point of game player. Michael Gallagher makes six point five. Is is not like close to Zuzki. Nope. 
and he's getting older and he's getting worse and worse. So for yeah. me, you have to give him that kind of money. So. But overall, that would be the, the right thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you could pick up a JT Miller out of that scenario. I don't know what he said, Vancouver is disparate. What what do you think about that? Like, what kind of how do you how they are disparate? I would be curious about to know that, Chinsa. Nickers um, will make it will get more time and point. Well, they have not signed Peterson yet. I think that's the challenge. Okay, you're talking about this. Okay, no. The and problem they, I call they have eleven million dollars right. and they have to sign Hughes and this. So right. for me, that's I'm back again. What I said, Michael, I know it's a little risk. But I will trade for GD Miller. That's a that's why I was just saying it's a safe move if you make an offer for him, and they might be willing to bite on that and then give Peterson the right number, or you just say, "Hey Peterson, I'm going to give you seven years, seventy-seven million, because legitimately he's that type of player." <laughs> but uh, the key with, with the key with uh, GD Miller, Michael, is because they need someone to get trade for get money. And oh, I get get maybe Jimmy Miller cheaper because they have to let him go for the money. He's the thing we don't remember is he's pretty old. He's twenty eight. Uh, yeah, I think he's a ninety two, right? I don't think he's thirty. I think he's a. I think he's a ninety two birth year, Pierre. I was like, maybe I'm wrong, but let's check. I thought he was a ninety two. Ninety three. So he's a 93 birth year. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree. This would be a part of the solution. Um, yeah. They're not going to move Hoaglander. Like they have no reason to. Sweden versus Finland. Is that today? No, the woman today is Canada versus Switzerland and uh, USA versus Finland. A pretty crazy game last uh, during the weekend for the woman. Um, Switzerland, Michael, win an OT after losing 2-0. They come back with three goals, uh, where the goal... Uh, I was pretty amazing to watch those games uh, this weekend. Was well, the first time Switzerland, as a woman, go where they are today. And then uh, during the weekend also, the Denmark uh, won uh, for the for participation for the Beijing, Beijing uh, Olympics. So... Great for Denmark, where we know the goaltender uh, passed away. Was the goaltender for them the last championship, and uh, really great, great story uh, during the weekend in hockey. And unfortunately, also we want to pray and recognize and be safe. Everybody in Louisiana, they got hit badly on the weekend. Yeah, it's it was crazy. a disaster over there too. Uh, so take your time about that one over there. Adrien Bourgon in the house today. We have so many people in today, so I want. Hovlander versus Kalkin. Yeah, he's better. <laughs> he's I think better. so, too. He's way better. I, Luke Tuck needs time. I mean, I don't – I think, he, like his brother, he'll just need a little time, and he'll be a real good prospect. But He's, he's going to be yet. a great bottom six, Michael, for That's the Montreal Canadian. I think he would be a very, very good third line at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Your star in the end is Caulfield, and Suzuki is legit, but – Suzuki, you're right. Like, you got to figure out how to get a number one centerman. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't, just don't think two more seasons. I don't know. How long do you think Price will keep playing? He have another four or five years contract. He will go all the way, I believe. Really? Wow. Yeah. I don't think so. He will give up about that one over there, right? Um, but I want to show Michael <laughs> if he will finish his career with Montreal. It can be interesting. You have an opportunity at the end of the end, maybe because you don't get then the the you know his money is not going to be full money at the end. So maybe the last two years he could have a chance to go where a team can be really close to win a Sunny Cup or something like that. That would be something could happen. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he just had his best run, and I don't think that's going to get repeated. I bet she has a bunch of injury problems. Yep. Norlander, Struble, Romanov, Guli, and Mayu. Well, I think, you know, it's interesting. Romanov right now is definitely ahead of Gul. Um, but Caden has the potential to leapfrog him. 
for me, I'll tell you what it's easy right now because Romanov is in it, shell. You have to put every first one right there, right? right. It's Romanov, Nolander, Gould, Strobel, and Mayu. Nolander, Michael, he was amazing this weekend. Oh! Yeah. D does he have offensive upside? What? Does Norlander have offensive upside? Yeah, he scored like yeah. a one time shot at the top circle this weekend. Was pretty amazing. Puck mover, everything like that is still, you know. Um, but I think he'll be the that will be the 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 white the wild card for the Montreal Canadian at the training camp. And and Michael, I know he's young, I know, but geez, if you're not a fan of Jan Mizak, uh, you like have to be a fan of Jan Mizak if you're Montreal Canadian fans. Because the Mizak, Michael, he's going to be a great hockey player in the NHL. The guy have a lot upside down for this organization for him. He played so well this weekend um, over there. And uh, I can't wait to see him at the training camp to be honest with you. The name going to talk a lot at during the rookie during the rookie for me is Mizak and Norlander. Yeah. Well, I, I think Misak's got a lot. I'm, I'm not sure what he will be in the NHL, but I think he will be in the NHL. Um, he's got, for where he was picked, he's going to be a very good pick. And I, I liked him in the OHL, and I think he's shown in the AHL. He's right there. He's got a lot of potential. So I think this was a really good pick by them. Um, Emilio Vero is an amazing skater. That's the one thing you notice, Yarmo, is all the guys that Detroit's picking – really can skate and you saw it like a couple years ago with albert johansson and then you're like wow this guy could be a top four in the nhl because he's such an elite skater like everything else gets a lot easier when you've got a player that can skate like that and i think this is another example of vero he might end up surprising us right you're like who but when you watch him you're like wow he's a very 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 good skater like my I'm only concern and i'm could be wrong here because on the side, you know, watch a lot. It's how you going to carry on that kind of skate and the 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 freedom on the ice over there to the yeah. uh, to the uh, North America. Well, it when you get a guy like that can skate that efficiently, a lot of other things get easier. <laughs> they can but they, now you they, become the physicality if you turn that. So not well, a lot so of players say, can like, carry on this constantly in North America. I don't say he will not. I just yeah. said the key right now is to figure out now when he show up sure. in North America, how he can adapt and adjust for sure. himself for the rest. So I think that's the one secret about Detroit that they do. And you kind of hit it on the head. They really invest immediately in getting these guys to train physically. So they're strong. They're not worried about you being big and bulky, but so that the guys are physically strong. And that's what they do a very, very good job of. And that's a lot of the motivation behind putting them in the AHL. It's yes to develop and get them used to the system, but more than anything, it's to hit, do what you're saying, which is they have a very, very scientific way to develop their players physically. And I think that a lot of teams are getting there. Some are there and some aren't, but Detroit's, I think, maybe the best at it right now still. Yeah, Vero, Yarrow. <laughs> This is how offer sheet work. Overpay for a young player. If they offer market value, the Canadians would have nothing to think about. Oh, for sure, Bennett. It, it's a total bomb in the backyard of Mark Bergevin. It was very well thought out by Carolina. <laughs> welcome aboard, Bennett. I believe yeah, it's the you, first Bennett. time here. So welcome to the show. And then for everybody, don't forget to click on the likes. And also we have a show every night, also at 9 o'clock Eastern time. But he's absolutely right, Bennett, about that one over there. Yeah. I didn't want to cover Pierre's face, so me. There we go. It says overpay for a young player if they offered market value, of course. But I think now what we're thinking of is, hey, I'm Mark Bergevin. What do I do? And that's why you say, do I pay this guy six million just to say, yeah, you can give our players offer sheets all day. We're always going to match them. Don't bother. Or do you say, listen, we just don't think he has the upside that we originally projected. You guys, 99%, Michael, when you have another sheet, the team responds right away. Right. 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 Now, the fact now he's waiting because he's looking for other options. He's trying to make a move. Present. Exactly. So, yeah. at the end of the day, that's what we are right now. And we know, and he knows, and it's overpaid for 6.1. And we all oh, agree yeah. about that one over there. You it's just like you cannot let him go if you don't have anybody. 
Well, you could. Yeah, you, you're hit on the head with Rain. Rain is also a Finn, by the way, Pierre. He's from yeah. Finland. Uh, Miro moved up in that draft because his skating was so elite, and we saw it. Like, the other things can come along a lot easier. It's a lot easier to get there if you have those wheels. And I think that's like when we scout players now, it's like an, it's like a must. Is this guy above average to elite? And that's what you look for. We don't draft players that don't have skating. And then we look at skill. We're not looking at size. We're not looking at other stuff. We want them to have compete, but we'll sacrifice a little bit for that skill level. Kim yeah. and Terry Pagula. You haven't been to any of our off-season meetings. Pierre, or, uh, Pierre, I don't know. I wasn't invited to any of the meetings at, in Buffalo. When Terry came show up, I smell 12 o'clock. Yeah, it's probably time to – we got to wrap. <laughs> He's always here late. Jesus. You know, this is the problem, Terry, is like you guys show up late to everything. On I everything. Is, I think this explains a lot about the culture of your organization. <laughs> 15 extra dollars and the number. And he gets... <laughs> oh, by the way, Michael, this was not made by Don Wandel. It was all did by the owners. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and you then know the, the... <laughs> the worst Twitter account is the Carolina Hurricanes on Twitter. They just screw everybody else. They don't, they jerk, they all jerk all the time you turn around their website in french they use the same words what michael bergerin did uh mark bergerin did two years ago it was all over with lol if he's not that it's a bunch of people like that on the twitter unfortunately well i think this is a reflection of the owner because we know he's a little different when when we were at the draft pier i was sitting with people from montreal and they're like look at this guy he's a bum how is an owner going up there in a baseball cap? He's unshaven. Yeah, he had the last laugh, Pierre. <laughs> He's smart. But again, <laughs> at the end of the day, I, I'm being honest with you, right? At the end of the day, it could be now turn around Bergeron and say, you know what? You want him at 6.1? Go get him and now find me, tell the, how you're going to fix your problem. Terry's complaining that I don't show up, but I'm not invited. I don't know the time, date, place. Like, I think you have bad communication inside of Buffalo, and this is, like, a hallmark of your team. And why did you – if I was at those meetings, Pierre, they wouldn't have given away Sam Reinhardt for nothing. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Rain, it was great to see you. Hopefully, you're going to be back another time. It would be awesome. Bennett, show up earlier. That would be great. Don't forget, guys, to click on the likes. It's great to have everybody here. We still have a lot of people in the room right now. We're again hanging a little bit, little bit longer. So what's the uh, our first sheet that we have of Molson or Bergevin? Uh, Mike Bergevin, to be honest with you on that one, and Montreal. Yeah, the buck there for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, Pierre, Hello, unfortunately, folks. I have to go. I can leave you on if you want to keep talking to me. Hey, people. how are we doing? But Benjamin, for sure, I love Levi. It would be better if Patrick Erwin and Martin Brother combined. <laughs> Terry, I'm not sure about that one over there. It's uh, a little bit long shot compared what happening with <laughs> with uh, with uh, Cook Enemy this weekend. But uh, hopefully he can become a good goaltender. I think he, he showed it during the World Championship. Now, can he carry on this to the NHL? I'm not sure about that. It would be interesting to see him. So why Bergeron and not Wendell? Uh, because um, the payback, it came from the owners. Down Wendell, it was not known until this weekend. And then this weekend, they tried to reach him, and he decided to go to Rodeo, and he said, everybody, I cannot put any words about that situation. He was, did not want to get disturbed at the Rodeo. And I believe... This is coming from the owners and not from, because remember, when they did that to Owl, the rumor was, Benjamin said, you don't have enough money or the financial problem over there. So I think there's more about the payback from the owners compared to the GM. I don't think Don Wendell um, is resuming what I accomplished in NHL. He's not a tired of person like that on my book compared to the owners where his reputation is a little bit rock and roll. 
Brett Marchand, welcome aboard, buddy. I will check again, my friend. Stefan is in the house with Yamo this morning. Welcome aboard, Stefan. Hopefully you have an amazing, great day. It's early right now for you. I know I'm good to see you tonight. Say hi at 9 o'clock. Hopefully it's a Monday over there. By the way, Stefan, so I don't know. It's Monday. Do you work hard over there in Sweden? Because I bet the weekend is the busy weekend for you is during the weekend, no? But again, I, I'd be not surprised what could happen. So honestly, the next thing, new breaking, um, I'm not on my computer right now. Moi, moi. We have some things going on. Elliot Freeman said something. The only thing I know is even Shevkovich is on the waiver purpose for bio-termination. Do I miss something else? Weekend is full. Have faith. Mike Benjamin would put a rabbit out of his... Hopefully, he can do that. Yes, NHL, yeah. Yes, Yamo. Small news, that's it. NHL, nothing else, coach. All right. Uh, no top, I don't want a rabbit. I want a lion. Um, yeah. And you have a lot of good players next year for as a UFA, by the way. So, um, by the way, you go to see my video around 5 o'clock tonight about UFA. But um, we'll be really interesting for the next couple of days. We'll go talk more about cooking and me. But Mo Bergevin is on the waiting longer and wait. I would not be surprised. Mike Bergevin wait until next Saturday and maybe couple of minutes before this is over to announce if he's going to keep or not. <laughs> I would not be surprised. Um, so it'll be interesting if he's going to trade for Jack Akel. A lot of people are concerned why Jack Akel is on Montreal right now, but it's not related to any trade. It's related to a camp with a uh, Bill Steel camp or something like that. That's what I heard. Have a great one, everybody. I think everybody is getting out now. It's about 10 or, uh, 12 o'clock or 6. We appreciate each one of you to participate at the early show in the morning. We know Kukinemi attract more people in the show. We know Kukinemi uh, bring a lot of discussion between each one of us. At the end of the day, I agree or disagree. We have to be respectful, and that's what we get for the quality of who you are because, of course, you are awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Don't forget, we're going to be back tonight, 9 o'clock p.m. with the Power Play Show. And finally, if you jump on the YouTube channel, don't forget to click on the community where you get a pool every single day. Become a member of the show. We bring you some continents. We start this today. So um, you're going to get those information about that one over there. Joseph, I don't know if you got my email. But uh, that's what you get. Have a great day in Otap. can wait to see you tonight. Don't leave me, Terry Kim. Have an amazing, great Monday, Terry. Trade Jack Eagle to Montreal, Tim. Uh, Kim and Terry will be very happy here. Michael Lepp already is on the meeting right now, and the second one's going to leave. And remember, whatever you do, of course, you have greatness inside of you. Have an amazing, great blessing Monday, everybody. I will see you tonight, 9 o'clock p.m. with the what? 
the number one quiz on a YouTube channel, the Frenchie Quiz. Have an amazing Monday. Bonne journée, mes amis. On se parle un peu plus tard ce soir.